belonged with his own place in the sky. His envious nature would help him realise that dream, the dream of Icarus. The challenge culminates in gliding, considered by many the purest form of human flight. Chairman of the Cambridge Gliding Club, Pat Harris. Well, glider is, gliding is a fantastic sport because, uh, by definition, uh, it does not uh, use uh, internal combustion engine or the jet engine. And so, therefore, it's using all of the natural meteorological forces that are in being. Gliding is flying reduced to its essence. Having to rely only on one's skill and the aircraft which keeps them aloft, gliding becomes a challenging sport tied to the clouds. And going from the early days of gliding, some uh, 50, 60 years ago, uh, up to present day, uh, the very clever use of meteorological readings that our present day pilots uh, give is, is quite phenomenal, quite phenomenal. Where a number of years ago in my early experience, one would look at a particular cloud and uh, look to see if it was giving what we call lift under that cloud. We now have pilots who have the capability of looking into segments of the cloud and cells as they are called. And that takes a lot of experience to know when you are under a cloud just where the cells are and where to use them. Unlike our feathered friends, gliders are unable to lift themselves into the air under their own power. There are generally two prime methods of launching. Uh, one is by way of winch. This is where there is a motorized drum of cable at one end of the field, which is pulled out to the glider, and by a particular signal sequence, the slack is taken out of the cable, and then the signal of all out is given, and the glider is then launched into wind across the field. Depending on the wind strength, uh, depends on the height, but generally, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 feet is commonplace. Another means of launching a glider into the air is by towing it to the desired altitude using another powered aircraft. Once it's in the air, however, the glider is freed for its solitary descent. To give an idea of gliding, um, we have gliders that have a lift-drag ratio, in other words, the rate at which they will descend. Um, because uh, gliding is only a controlled means of descent in still air. Uh, they have ratios as high as 55 to 1. And this means theoretically that in still air conditions, with one mile high, this glider could do 55 miles in a straight line. The delphine-shaped sailplanes are simple and elegant monuments to the principles of aerodynamics, an architect's dream where form and function are satisfied simultaneously. The reason an aircraft flies is precisely the same for a glider, a single engine powered aircraft or even a jumbo. They have what is known as an aerofoil uh, or the wings that people normally refer to. And fundamentally uh, an aerofoil going through the air, and I'll just show you a quick shape. If you can just visualize this piece of paper here is level underneath and cambered on the top. And then that progresses across from my right to my left. In going through the air, the air splits before the leading edge. And because it is a fact that the air going underneath the wing is going to travel a shorter distance than going across the top of the wing, and it wants to arrive at the rear of the aerofoil at the same time, one gets a speeding over the longer distance and therefore a decompression. And so therefore, that creates lift. And to just demonstrate that, if you can imagine that this is, I'm bending this paper across my mouth and I'm just blowing over the top of it, you can see